Thank you, Steve, and welcome to everybody. It's a really great day. It's a special day. Not only are we 10 years in the making, and in quite a decade it has been, uh, it's been an incredible year that I'd love to share some highlights about. And we've got an updated vision and some major new announcements, especially as we look forward on a multi-year basis about, about electrifying this planet, planet Navitas, as we call it, the future of an electrified planet. And we got a nice remodeled building, give it our own special Navitas touch throughout. A lot of fun things to share with you. We'll give you more details there. But before I dig in to the future, let's take a little look at 2023. It's been an extraordinary year at Navitas. And a time when semiconductors are pretty mixed, actually semiconductor numbers are actually down 9% this year. We couldn't be more proud about our financial performance. Revenues up over 100% compared to 22. Even more amazing, Deloitte recognized us as one of the fastest tech companies in North America, probably the fastest semiconductor company out there, 2,129% in just three years, the last completed three fiscal years. Pretty crazy. You might think, well, that's coming off a low base. Maybe it's a super low number. No, actually, there's a minimum revenue. It's the second year in a row we won this three-year award. So pretty extraordinary stuff. Very excited, very proud about it. We're doing it while expanding our gross margins throughout the year. Very successful capital raise earlier this year, and we're very happy the stock price has followed nicely, over 100% up year to date, more than double the socks this year. But the financials only tell part of the story. A lot of this is coming through rapid expansion of the technology, our customer pipeline, and our customer relationships. Today, we'll be announcing an updated pipeline of actually 1.25 billion, 760 million earlier in the year. Pretty extraordinary stuff. Where is it coming from? Not only is our core initial markets like mobile and consumer really nicely ramping, we actually see significant expansion into our new markets, electric vehicle, solar, industrial, appliance, data centers, shipping this quarter for the very first time. Over 250 GAN chargers, more than that in development, 250 are shipping in production, 10 of the top 10 smartphone and laptop guys already in production with Navitas ScanFast chargers, over 137 million shipped cumulatively across gallium nitride and silicon carbide. Pretty exciting stuff. We've been equally busy on the M&A front, as you know, three major investments in the last 18 months. Elevation for high-frequency silicon controllers, VDD for high-frequency digital isolators, and our biggest and most impactful Genesic leading edge silicon carbide technology that nobody knew about, but we know about it. Now we're using our system design centers, our global sales and FAE team, bringing this out to so many customers, driving a big part of that explosion in the pipeline that I mentioned, 1.25 billion. Quickly making investments in that area. Earlier this year, we signed a 500% increase in capacity with XFAB, that's ramping very nicely, fueling the growth of the business. And we announced a plan for $20 million of in-house silicon carbide EPI investments, which actually are starting here next quarter. The building is under construction down below to prepare for the first of those reactors that would come in. And last but certainly not least, technology development. Four major new platforms we're going to dig into today. Each of them have significant market implications, many of them related to the acquisitions we just made, and now we're rolling out new generations of technology. That includes Gen 4 GANSense singles and half bridges, making a big impact in both motors for home appliances and mobile chargers and consumer adapters. GANSense control, taking those elevation silicon controllers from that company we acquired, combining it with our high-frequency GAN, to deliver high density, high frequency adapters. Generation three fast silicon carbide. The next generation of Genesix already here, already rolling out, already getting designed into a ton of customers. And then maybe the most exciting for me today, GAN safe. This is what we've been waiting for to open the doors to high power GAN adoption. We all know we started with mobile chargers, consumer adapters. That's still relatively low adoption, single digit, maybe 10% adoption. We've got a lot of growth ahead there. But the idea of bringing GAN into these high power markets is exciting, but also challenging. There is a reason many have tried and failed. We believe we have the winning solution. We're going to tell you all about it with GANSAFE. And then a real technology breakthrough. We're not even frankly sure of all the implications of it. Bidirectional GAN. Dan Kinzer and others are going to speak all about uh, that program that has implications, I think, in probably every market that we're looking at addressing. 
Some very exciting achievements, announcements, recognitions in 2023. Let me touch on a few. First of all, it's our first year as the first and only pure play next generation power semiconductor company. Nobody else on the planet is focused as we are on a combination of GAN and silicon carbide without the distraction or dilution of silicon power devices. We do some silicon devices, but these are the auxiliary ones, the controllers, drivers, and isolators that complement and get more value out of the customer and out of the technology with gallium nitride and silicon carbide. Recognized by Forbes, this is pretty cool. I think we're top 50 or something as the best financial performance for small cap companies. That's a big name, a big recognition. Deloitte, similarly, recognizing us as one of the fastest growing tech companies, as I mentioned, but also non-financial. We're very proud. Last year, we announced the first carbon neutral semiconductor company in the world. This year, we've renewed it again. We plan to continue that and grow it, setting a standard for our whole industry. So some new things we want to talk about. We've talked in the past about a $22 billion opportunity to displace silicon with GAN or silicon carbide in all of these various markets. That's an incredible opportunity for a company today that will do close to $80 million this year. And it's very diverse, driven by a lot of key factors in electrification and energy savings. For the first time today, we took a look at what Tesla announced back at February at their investor day. Tesla called, called it Master Plan Version 3. And Elon Musk outlined the steps and what it would take technologically and economically to electrify our planet. And his main point was, this is possible. It's doable. It's economically compelling. It's less expensive than operating off of fossil fuels for the coming decades. And it can be done with technologies available today. Some of those key technologies are gallium nitride and silicon carbide. So we took his plan, how many EVs, how much energy storage, how many roadside chargers, how much of this, how many heat pumps, things we're going to talk about all throughout the day, translated that into the opportunity in coming decades for gallium nitride and silicon carbide. That figure is $1.3 trillion. Now, how does that relate to the $22 billion? $22 billion is what this industry is already shipping today, mostly with silicon, and we can convert that from silicon again and silicon carbide. That's why we often talk about this as a displacement technology. If all we did was that, we have an opportunity to be an amazing leadership company, incredible financial success. But 22 billion is with the current state of electrification. Energy sources are only 20% electrified. That's solar and wind. Everything else is fossil fuels, coal-fired power plants, converted to electricity and then put on the grid. Look at the end applications. Also about 20% electrified today. Gas cars, gas cooking, gas heating, all of those are still fossil fuel based. That drives the 22 billion. Where does the 1.3 trillion come from? We need to convert that other 80%. And when we do, the opportunity for gallium nitride and silicon carbide to not only participate, but accelerate and enable it is extraordinary. And it's 1.3 trillion over some period of time. That's up to the planet. That's up to us to all contribute and make it happen. Is that 10, 20, 30 years? But those numbers are extraordinary, taking that 22 billion potential to 30, 40, 50, even $60 billion a year. Pretty extraordinary. We're going to be publishing our own white paper on this uh, investigation and study and analysis, and it really speaks to the real upside that we want to go pursue, not just financially, but the upside to electrify this planet. I'll break down the details. Electric vehicle is a big piece, not surprising. Everybody's talking about it. We're still early days in electrifying our fleet of transportation, not just cars, buses, trucks, every form of transportation is covered in the Tesla plan and covered by ours. But the size of these others are extraordinary. So uh, energy storage, 123 billion. Solar inverters, 85 billion. Home appliances, wind pumps, uh, I'm sorry, heat pumps, wind power, the list goes on and on. Pretty extraordinary opportunity for us and for our entire industry. Now with that said, the opportunity is immense. I think you came in here probably knowing that already. What do we do about it? How do we solve this challenge. And I look at this from an industry perspective, not from a Navitas perspective. And I really believe it comes down to these fundamental five key critical enablers or drivers. Of course, the technology is critical. Gallium nitride and silicon carbide are widely known as the key technologies to displace silicon and make this transition happen. But I would specifically point out it's the technology with the highest efficiency, the highest frequency, and the highest integration potential. These three things, efficiency not only drives energy savings, 
It allows you to shrink things down and miniaturize them and dematerialize them. It allows you to have less energy burned up as heat, so you spend less money, time, and effort on thermal management. The frequency, of course, is the key to gain and silicon carbide to switching fast, not because the chip gets better, but because more than half of the bill of materials of almost all power systems are in the uh, magnetic and mechanical components. The EMI filters, the transformers, the inductors, the PCBs on the mechanical side, the housing, plastic or metal, all of that is usually half or more of the system. The faster we switch the power device, the more we shrink the size, weight, and cost of that other half of the BOM. So it's actually far more important to get the frequency up and reduce the cost and the rest of that than it is to take the cost of the GAN or silicon carbide chip down. And integration is something we're doing uniquely well with GAN ICs, integrating all those other circuitries around very cost effectively, mind you, not just integrating for the sake of integration, but when you integrate, you shrink the size and weight, but you also can do that and drive a lot of bill of materials cost. This is a, uh, a key enabler that I think we're very well positioned on, we're clearly very focused on it, and you can expect to see exciting integration strategies coming out when it, as it relates to silicon carbide into the future. But reliability is number two. This is fundamental. This is a very conservative industry, and it's conservative for a reason. You have a very harsh electrical environment, high voltage, high temperature, high power. It's a very uh, common place to have failure modes and where the failure, failures can bring things down, and when a power supply goes down, the whole system can go down. So it's for very good reason this is a conservative industry. You cannot sell these technologies on PowerPoint. You have to prove it in the lab, a lot of testing. And that's exactly what we've done. Designed in, lab tested, production tested, and field proven. Each of those are proprietary methods. Design in the protection circuits from the start. Intensive characterization. We have over, I believe it's 700 billion device hours of lab testing, over $10 billion, of, uh, 10 billion device hours of, of field testing. Really extraordinary, 137 million shipped, as I said, parts per billion quality and reliability. That is not easy, and it's a multi-layered approach to deliver on it. System cost comes back to frequency efficiency integration. You've got to look at those other components. The chip is critical, gallium nitrogen and silicon carbide, to have that indirect impact on the rest of that system, and that's where the real leverage is on the bill of materials. Also, chip size is important. It's not just about wafer price, chip size. Our chips are 20 to 50% smaller across silicon carbide and gallium nitride compared to the uh, majority of our competitors. Ecosystem, as I said, you better have influence and control over those other components I'm talking about, the controllers, drivers, and isolators, the magnetics, very important. So in the beginning, we partnered with others. Now we're developing our own. We continue to work with magnetics and system houses to really drive that ecosystem. It's very fundamental. And last but not least, education. This is an all new way to design next generation power systems. Power supply engineers in this industry for 30 years have been doing it the same way. The next 30, it's a different way. It's a different direction. It's not easy, but we spent a lot of time educating ourselves, hiring the best of the best engineers, going very deep on these systems. Each application, mobile chargers, EV onboard chargers, Solar inverters, step by step, digging very deeply into the system requirements, understanding how to optimize it, and now creating formal labs, which is now leading to joint labs with our customers where we can co-develop each of these applications to learn the system and drive that final phase of customer level adoption. Pretty exciting stuff, and this is basically the outline for what we're gonna cover for the rest of today. Let me introduce some of the speakers that are gonna be covering it. First and foremost, next up will be Dan Kinzer. He's my uh, friend, um, business partner. Uh, we've worked together for 167 years, give or take. And we started in 1977 at IR. I joined in 85. We've been fr fast friends and business partners ever since. We created three to five different technologies, product families, and businesses at IR, all very successful. He went off to become the CTO of Fairchild. I went off to run my own company. We reunited 10 years ago. We always believed in gallium nitride. We started that program at International Rectifier in the year 2000, 23 years ago. We knew it was early. We also knew 10 years ago when we started the time was right to solve these remaining problems, drive those five things I outlined, and make this business a reality, which is what we're doing. So a super exciting and very proud moment for me to share this stage with Dan, but also to share it with brand new key members of our management team. Sid comes from Genesic. He is really the inventor and one of the key technical leaders, not only at Genesic and now at Navitas, but for the industry in the world of silicon carbide. He is as sharp as I've ever met, and he's a genuinely nice guy. And he fits perfectly 
in our culture. It's a great combination. And then you're going to hear from people you also have probably have never heard from before, some of our great technical leaders at the system and applications level. Jason, Zhang, Hao, Sun are incredible at the power systems level. And it's very hard to find people that can be expert at power systems and understand semiconductor devices, semiconductor integration, semiconductor language, and how to bridge those two worlds, which is what Navitas is all about, deep system expertise combined with deep semiconductor expertise. That is where the magic happens. And it happens with the leadership of these key people. Bring it all together from a customer perspective, David Carroll, who runs Worldwide Sales, would talk to you about how all of this is turning into a $1.25 billion pipeline, up 65% just from a few months ago. And then we'll wrap it up, of course, with how we're translating all this into financial excellence and scalability as we go forward with our CFO, Ron Shelton. And I just have a few other comments to add to our day. Steve described a little bit. We've got a bunch of surprise guest speakers in the audience today. We're going to wait, keep you in suspense, and announce them one by one when we wrap up here and give them a chance to tell you their view on why gallium nitride and silicon carbide are changing their industries and how Navitas is their partner to make it happen. Next, Planet Navitas. We're going to check this place out. As I said, we call it Planet Navitas, not just as our headquarters in the center of our global universe, but also as our vision in the future of an electrified planet. We're going to talk about how we design these GAN chips, design the silicon carbide, reliability and test, very critical and proprietary, as I described earlier, and then that deep applications and system engineering capability. A brand new demo area, and we've got a little twist to this. The demo area will speak to the past using old silicon, where things were in the last decade or so using silicon, the present modern day advanced gallium nitride and silicon carbide based power electronics, how that's changing every industry we touch, which is basically every industry in electronics. But even more exciting, the future. We've created a studio. The studio is where we're creating our vision, our future of what this planet can look like when it's fully electrified and what that can mean to Navitas and our entire industry of gallium nitride and silicon carbide. 